Hello, uh, welcome to my first painting video of 2020. As you can see, it's a chameleon, and like last year's iguana, I've painted it with Arteza's metallic paints. So, I'm not, you probably won't be able to see it very well on camera, but it really does sort of sparkle and shine when you walk around it in real life. But never mind, you'll have to imagine that, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, so, I'll get on and show you the video and if you like what uh, you see it would be great if you would consider liking and subscribing plus I'll put links to my website Instagram and all that social media rubbish uh, unfortunately it has to be done these days so hope you enjoy bye my starting point was to uh, trace out the chameleon going round every last scale which uh, took a while but was quite straightforward and the first task here is to paint the whole background in, in black it's going to take a few coats but just as a starting point as there will be a bit of a color in the background just just a hint My initial plan was to uh, paint each scale with um, full blooded paint and basically nearly finish it off in the f first go but um, after doing these uh, scales along the back I decided that wasn't uh, the best way to go. After not liking the way I did the scales along the ridge of the back, I've decided to cover the whole chameleon in a light wash. So I've added plenty of water to each colour and here I'm just starting to map out which colours go where as this chameleon colour wise is very complicated. Now I've gone over the whole chameleon with a wash, light wash. I'm now having a second go with a little bit more opaque paint and uh, paying closer attention to the borders of the, each scale. What I'm starting to do now is pick out a, one of the scales colours using paint almost straight out of the tube, just a little tiny bit of water. And wherever I see that scale colour, I'm just blobbing it in there.
I can't put it off any longer. I've now got to paint around every one of the scales. When I did the guana last year, I started by painting the background color. That's the uh, the color that's, the, I don't know whether you would you call it skin, but it's the bit in between the scales. And I painted that first, so an overall color on, and then put the scale colors on top of that. This time I've done it where I've put the drawn the scales out and put the color in the scales, or some of the color in the scales, and then drawn around them. I'm not sure which way is best. I thought I'd just try both. Possibly if I did it again, I'd do the, do it the way I did the iguana. But it's good to try these things. Now the um, I want to call it grouting. The uh, the color that's around the deeper parts that's around the scales is the same color as the uh, the scales, just a lot darker. So I'm starting off going around the the green areas with a dark green, and then I'll go around the blue areas with a, a dark blue. There are a few areas on the chameleon where that does isn't true, whereas the um, the background color is completely different to the scales. But I'll uh, treat those individually. <laughs> I've got bored with um, grouting, and plus it started to make my hands cramp a bit, so I thought I'd uh, have a break and do something else. So I'm starting here to re-establish the scales with a much thicker, more opaque paint, so pretty much straight out of tube, and paying a bit more uh, attention to the accuracy of the colour. And the uh, grouting process has encroached on the uh, scales themselves a bit, so I'm fixing that. Right, I've uh, run out of uh, scales to paint, so I'm back to the grouting.
Around the comedian's crest, I'm taking advantage of the uh, dark colour I've got on the brush and added some of the shadows because this part of the comedian's scales are much more pronounced. The mammoth task of painting round all the scales is finished, so I'm free to get back to painting the scales themselves. And uh, it's more of the same. Find the uh, colour that's closest to the reference photo. And as I'm using metallic paints, they're, they're never going to get exact, but close enough is good enough. And this part of the process should go a bit quicker, as putting a blob of paint in the centre of a scale is a lot easier than carefully painting around it. Here I'm going over the scales I've already done again, this time with a slightly lighter colour and uh, I'm also trying to build up a kind of three dimensional lump where the scales are which will help the illusion of the scales being a real three dimensional shape. The eye on the lizard is about the only the only part that didn't get the scales drawn out first and I'd put that sort of darkish background to it. So um, I've got this coppery coloured paint and I'm putting as large a blob on this very small brush as I can and just spotting round where, where this, these little scales, little lumps go. I'm trying to, like the rest of it, I'm trying to make them as three-dimensional as possible so there's some real shape to it. As uh, when you walk around the painting in real life, those little raised lumps will really shine out. It's a shame you can't see it on this flat version. The scales on the head and forelegs of this chameleon are really very multicoloured. So the strategy now is to pick one colour and uh, just uh, find which scales are closest to that colour and just uh, pull it in. So I'll be darting about all over the place now.
just uh, reframing the camera to uh, show the legs better as I'm going to uh, start working on those more. I've discovered that uh, it works slightly better if I do add um, a bit more water to the paint and uh, just spot a big sort of like watery bubble that's just got enough surface tension to hold its position and uh, it seems to be doing a, a better job of uh, making this slight dome shape I want on each scale as although it's paint you can still slightly sculpt with it because it has a, a thickness. In the reference photo this back leg is very out of focus so I'm going to simulate that a bit by, by layering it with uh, very watery colours and letting them merge together to simulate uh, the effects of uh, an out of focus leg. I'm now at the stage where I'm going to take an overall look at the uh, chameleon, see where it needs adjustment, see where I've missed bits and uh, keep building up those scales. An interesting feature of this chameleon is, particularly in the blue scales, there seems to be quite a few of them that have gone dark. It's as though it's made of LEDs and they've blown pixels. Not sure what causes it, but I'm going to replicate it anyway by um, using a very watered down dark, darker blue and just washing over the brighter scales to darken them. I've decided the crest isn't quite right a sort of darker outline isn't thick enough so I'm going to make more of the scales that colour. The chameleon's in quite full light but there are some shadows so establishing those by using a very watered down black and washing over the scales that are there.
It's getting close to the end now, so I've switched my attention to highlights. So wherever I can see a highlight, I'm mixing a, a near white version of the, the scale color and, and going over it again. signature on so that must mean I think I've done enough you don't so much as finish a painting as abandon it it's always very difficult to know when to stop because you can go on forever so uh, thank you for watching this far and if you like what you've seen please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you get notified when more come out and don't forget to check out the the links to my website instagram where you get to see what's coming up next and i hope to see you on the next video thank you bye